Yo right, guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, removing headlight tint from a car. So a bit of background, this is the Octavia project that I've been working on. When, when it was bought, it had a dark tint on the, uh, on the headlights, like these here, on both headlights. And the headlight performance was not great in the dark. It was kind of like wearing sunglasses at night. You couldn't see the throw on the lights wasn't great and also it had started to fade along the top edges as well so in short I thought that removing the headlight film would be a plus for the car be able to see more at night which was a big issue and also maybe look a bit nicer so that's the background to the problem I tried four different methods to remove the headlight film uh, the first one was with a uh, mouse sander, you know, the ones that you hold in your hand, electric jobby. And while that did sand the headlight, as soon as you sanded it, the headlight turned misty. And it was impossible, I would say, to tell if you'd actually removed the film or if you'd uh, just scratched the film. So I didn't really want to do both headlights with the sand in and then realise at the end when I came to do the lacquer on it that the film was still there. I tried it and I abandoned that. The next thing I did was try it with uh, razor blades. I'll just get a razor blade and just go across the surface of the, of the lamp, see if, the, um, see if I could get the pieces of the headlight tint to come off in one piece, like in you know, bigger pieces. Uh, kind of worked, kind of didn't. It, it was still leaving a lot of uh, residue, a lot of glue residue on the headlights and plus it, they were still coming out in a billion pieces so that didn't really do the job. Uh, another method I tried then was with uh, steam. It was the same steam gun I used to do the uh, badges, to remove the badges. So again just came on it, well, basically the same method as the badges, just put a lot of heat on it and see what happens and while that did work the problem with it I don't know if you can see it here it started to sort of craze the plastic and I am assuming that the heat was doing that not that it was well it's steam so it's going to be 100 celsius but that was like I said it crazed the uh, the headlight cover so even though that looked like it might have worked the crazing was not an ideal situation so that had to be kicked into touch so the fourth method I used, and the one I went with in the end, was the uh, Dremel flapper wheel. And using that, as you could see in the video, I'll do a time lapse for it.
when you were doing that, <clears throat> you could see, you know, when the film was coming off very easily. You could tell exactly where you were with it. So in the end, I did that on both headlights. And while it did the job, there was one issue with it, and it's kind of my fault. Well, it is my fault because I'm the one that did it. But on this this headlight, it's fine. It's as good as it can realistically be, I think. But on this one, is not great. Uh, basically, what I did was I just put too much pressure on that flapper wheel when it was uh, when I was sanding the headlight, and that left um, little gouges in the um, the cover of the light. I mean, they're not deep, but you can you can just about see them probably through the light. So it's not a perfect finish. And I think the reality is, like even this one where I where I did it lighter. It's still not 100% perfect. So what did I learn from all that? Well, if I was going to do it again, I think I'd go with option one, which was the sander, the electric sander, um, and do that. That way, I'm going to get a perfectly flat surface, absolutely guaranteed, because the surface at the bottom of the sander is flat. And when I come to do the lighter sanding, like with the 600 grit and then the 2000 grit, I think I would have been able to understand if there was still film on the light or not. So that was the mistake I made. The electric sander with a flat surface was the way to go. So those are the mistakes I made. It is what it is. We are where we are. With the headlights as they are now, without the film, with the clear, we're back to clear lenses. Did it do the job? Has it made a noticeable difference to the light performance at night? And I would say absolutely yes the i would say the light performance now is what you would consider normal for a car of this era and for that reason alone i would never consider putting tints on a headlight ever i mean i i think i would even bulk a putting like a yellow tint on there but famous last words i might put yellow tints on there but i think it stands to reason if you cover the headlights with a film it's going to reduce the light output and for me for the roads that i drive and i don't drive on uh, well-lit motorways and well-lit roads all the time a lot of the time i'm on country roads pitch black i need the light performance you know plus there could be people walking around it's just it's a performance issue and it's also a safety issue for me you've got to have good good headlights so i'm not going to do anything that's going to compromise the the light performance so yeah those are the four methods I tried to use a headlight film and I think definitely the best one to do is, uh, like I said, the sander. Should it have been so difficult to remove this headlight film? And I think the answer is no. And I think the reason this was so difficult to remove, i.e. not being able to peel it off, and if you could peel it off it was coming off in a billion pieces, is simply because it had been left on there too long. I would say like renew it every two years and I think you know you're probably going to be uh, good to go it's not going to be um, a disaster that's the video guys how to remove window tint this is what I did maybe you've got a better idea if you have leave a comment below that's it for now look after yourself and I'll see you in next Sunday's video